Now, doctor, another question of a mere nonsensical value only for entrance, which you need to remember is contents of inferior orbital fissure and annulus of gin and superior orbital fissure you must be sure like a parrot from ages immemorial entrance means entrance going student means he is expected to know these things like a parrot so that's the reason parrot stop the entrances what are the contents of you have an inferior orbital fissure here you have a superior orbital fissure now doctor maxillary division of the fifth cranial nerve infraorbital artery zygomatic nerve and branches of the inferior ophthalmic vein they all pass through inferior orbital fissure <clears throat> then you have one central tendinous ring of fibrous tissue from where the extraocular muscles will be taking an origin which is called annulus of gin through the annulus of gin what are the structures which will be passing through that uh, circle three structures abducens nerve oculomotor nerve and nasociliary nerve typically will be passing through the annulus of gin then you have a superior orbital fissure what are the structures passing you can remember live fast to see neat is achieved aggressively you need to run the time has come so l for lacrimal nerve fast is for frontal 2 is for trochlear c is for superior ophthalmic vein neat is for nasociliary nerve i is for inferior ophthalmic vein a for abducens uh, is what you have to fundamentally remember which are the structures of the superior orbital fissure if you look at the plain skull then you have typically one optic canal here you have a superior orbital fissure here in this cave you are having one inferior orbital fissure which we are talking about what are the two structures only two structures which pass through the optic canal it is the optic nerve and ophthalmic artery are the ones which pass through the optic nerve optic canal now doctor the next important uh, entity we will talk about is optic nerve glioma typically in this mri you are able to see this is the normal optic nerve mri appearance <coughs> this is the side where the glioma of the optic nerve is located unfortunately optic nerve gliomas are found in pediatric population in their first decade of life and uh, sometimes they can be associated with neurofibromatosis they can lead to optic atrophy and papilledema so that is a small story of optic nerve glioma <clears throat> now let us talk about embryology of the eye how is the eye fundamentally derived is an important question you have been surface ectoderm neurectoderm and uh, mesoderm they all are contributors for the embryological growth of the eye what will neurectoderm basically contribute the retina the posterior layers of the retina optic nerve they are all neuroectodermal structures surface ectoderm the second important source for the development of uh, the ophthalmic system the lens and the corneal epithelium they are all derived from the surface ectoderm is what i want to underscore then what is mesoderm will be doing typically it is there between neurectoderm and surfectoderm and uh, it will be giving rise to all those fibrous and vascular coats of the eye is uh, what you have to ultimately remember then you are having some neural crest derivatives which contribute to the development and embryology of the eye so choroid sclera corneal endothelium they are all fundamentally from the neural crest cells now this neural crest cells they need to travel a long distance they need to have that uh, gps the geological positioning system which we use there must be some memory by which uh, all the way it starts somewhere in the embryo and reaches some other place and then for example 
adrenal medulla comes from the neurotrus so then all the way migrate and lead to development of the medulla exactly adrenal medulla they will create who will give them all this intelligence there are a set of genes which are called the home box containing genes hox a hox b hox c hox d etc they regulate the transcription and they enable fibroblast growth factors to get produced and they are responsible for the neural cell migration and the development of uh, molecular development of the eye now when will our eye start developing fourth week of the embryonic life just when the mother receives the good news that she is pregnant already the baby's eye started to open up by the time mother's eyes also start to open up that uh, to the reality that she is pregnant easy to remember uh, for the tomorrow's exam because there are so many structures when will the growth begin if the question comes how will you remember the process some way now you have optic grooves which appear in the neural folds at the cranial end of the embryo they convert into optic vesicles and the cavities within the optic vesicles are continuous with the forebrain and the optic vesicles soon come in contact with the surfectoderm and surface ectoderm is important for the development of lens so surface ectoderm same time will thicken a part of it and that lead to the lens placoid formation and the lens placoids will invaginate and lead to the lens pit to form and the optic vesicles will invaginate and they form the double walled optic cups as what you can see so this is how the structure and the globe of the eye basically develops there's a lot of trash in that but main thing to remember is at four weeks of embryological life the growth of the eye will start evolving is what need to be remembered so today our session is honored by very academic enthusiastic students of guntur dr prabhakar from anandpur and uh, tirupati vaisag etc etc kakinada so dr the future of uh, a coaching program is going to be more online if you sit in a live classroom with about 3 400 uh, classmates what kind of interaction you will have you can't proactively participate whereas uh, anyway since exam became online mock test ke liye you need to have computer and internet same time every day we will invite a lot of teachers with an academic program 5 to 8 pm we will have uh, a live interactive review discussion because of your housemanship if you miss the session you can still have everything available in the video library you can click and listen already our previous video lectures everything are available so now you have a compendium of knowledge available only thing is it's up to you to make use of uh, the knowledge our job is only to drive you to read learn practice questions and then fight for the exam now doctor there is a very important vessel which will be responsible for supplying the blood and oxygen to the eye in the embryonic life it is called the hyaloid artery which is a branch of the ophthalmic artery it supplies the inner layer of the optic cup the lens placoid and vesicle etc etc now what happens to this uh, vessel ultimately in our uh, adult life the distal part of this hyaloid vessels eventually will degenerate and the proximal part of this hyaloid artery will retain a central artery of the retina is what we have to fundamentally remember sometimes it may persist if it persist it is bad it can lead to pathology is what need to be remembered now coming to the development of the retina how does retina develop it is from the walls of the optic cup it will be developing as an outgrowth of the forebrain from the neurectoderm and uh, the outer thinner layer of the optic cup 
becomes the retinal pigment epithelium and the inner thicker layer of the optic cup typically convert into the neural retina and the various retinal layers is what you need to remember. So that is all in brief the various issues about the anatomy of the eye which is a frequently asked question in the exam. Obviously when you know embryology you want to know embryological anomalies in the eye. There can be a coloboma of retina. What is the meaning of it? There is a gap in the retina that is not the deal. Where is the gap located is going to be the favorite question of the examiner. If the coloboma of retina is inferior to retina, lateral, medial, superior, examiner has thousand ways of asking. Usually it is inferior to the optic disc. A defect is bilateral and it is to the defective retinal fissure closure which is responsible. Similarly, in the iris also there can be a coloboma where uh, typically it also involves the inferior sector of the iris and that gives a typical keyhole appearance for the iris is what you have to ultimately remember. Then what is cyclopia? <coughs> typically the eyes are partially fused or completely fused so that only a single median eye will be remaining in the cyclopia. What is microphthalmia? Obviously, as the name says, it is a very small eye, but you need to remember one trisomy. Which trisomy, doctor? Trisomy 13 and the microphthalmia are associated, which is a favorite question of the examiner. Similarly, torch group of congenital infections, rubella, toxoplasma, herpes simplex, they all can lead to development of microphthalmia.